Dear students, welcome to the course of Architecture and Town Planning. I am your teacher, Ravinder Kumar Khyani. I am an architect, an urban designer, an urban planner, an assistant professor at Department of Architecture and Planning, NIT University of Engineering and Technology, Karachi, Sin, Pakistan. I am going to teach you the town planning part of this course. There are various books of town planning. The course content which is offered in this department at NIT University, there is no single book through which we can learn this course. So therefore, I have studied different books and learning from different books, I come up with this uh, lecture. Let's begin our course. First of all, it's important that we should have understanding about the course contents. These are the course contents. There are 28, uh, you can say, topics. The first uh, course begins with the understanding of the purpose and the scope of town planning, in which we will understand the definitions of town planning and urban planning and urban design, and we will look at the trends of urban growth, how cities grow over the period of time, and then what are the objectives of sound planning or sound urban planning or appropriate urban planning. Then we will look at the modern urban planning in Pakistan and abroad. After understanding the purpose and the scope of town planning, we are going to study the information required in town planning. Because town planning is no uh, the work of not a single person, but there are variety of people, variety of professionals in the world. And there are various activities that are conducted within the subject of town planning. For example, maps. The first and foremost important thing in town planning is making of maps. How the city is mapped. So mapping techniques are important to understand. And that is the first information we require by under, while understanding the town planning. Then we must know the natural resources. The natural resources that exist in any city or town, or we have a natural area where we are going to make a new town. And then we look at the economic resources. So while planning, we need information about the natural resources and economic resources. So as considering these two things, we plan the town. Then we look at the legal and administrative problems because city is a growing entity. Over the period of time, it grows and expands. And with growth exists the population growth as well as the economic growth and the physical expansion of the city. So there occurs variety of administrative problems because in urban areas, in cities, people are more and land, uh, land is less and the resources are less and economic resources are to be generated in a city. Then we look at the understand, uh, topic of civic survey, with how the city is surveyed and information is collected from the city about the people, about the natural resources, about the economic resources, and the other, uh, you can say, situations or different physical conditions of the city. And then the third theme of this course is understanding the urban ecology. Urban ecology, first of all, we must know what is ecology. Ecology is the balance in nature. So understanding urban ecology means understanding the balance in the nature of the city, which means that how the people are living in the city and what are their needs and wants. And on the basis of those needs and wants, what is the existing situation? Then we look at the need and scope of the comprehensive plan. The scope and co of comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan is like a master plan that how the city will grow over the period of time for the next decades. Then we look at the phases of planning, how planning is done in different phases and principles of planning. What should be the principle? For example, we can say that the health is the basic uh, issue for everyone. So we design the city by considering the health conditions. So principles of planning are important. And we have to understand. Then in the city, it is very important that we should have an understanding about the communication. 
So we look at the communication aspect of the city. That include the rail transport, the road network, the airport, port and harbor facilities, the street traffic and design. And the last theme that is to be studied is urban zoning and land use control. In urban zoning and land use control, we will study about the parks and recreational facilities, the location of public and semi-public buildings, the civic centers, the commercial centers, the local shopping centers, the public schools, the location of industry and residential area, the layout of streets and road crossing and lighting, the community planning, suburban development, slum areas and their upgrading. So, because city is having different kinds of spaces and different kind of people, so we need to make zones. For example, the residential zone should be separate from the commercial zone and the commercial zone should be separate from the industrial zone. Similarly, there are various kinds of buildings and where these buildings should be located in the city because every day people have to do different things. For example, if you are a academic person, if you are a, uh, <laughs> if you are a job going person, then you must know that where the commercial area should be located for where the people go for job. And if you are a student, then you, you must know about the location of the schools and the colleges because every day people have to move from one place to the other. Though now situation has changed nowadays, but even then one has to make the appropriate location of every uh, activity of the city. So a city can be developed properly. And then there are suburban areas and slum areas or kachi abadis in the cities which are illegal settlements and this is a major issue in the city. So we also look at the issues of the city and how to deal with these issues and how to properly or appropriately zone the urban area and control the land use which uh, exists in a city. Let's go ahead and see, uh, start our course. First of all, we must know what is meant by urban and rural. The urban means related to cities and towns and rural means related to villages and hamlets. Therefore, the urban is a geographical area distinct from rural and rural is a geographical area distinct from the urban. Now what are these characteristics of urban area? What are the characteristics of rural area? Let's talk about it. For example, look at this image. How the buildings are grouped together or how so many buildings exist together because land is less and built up area is more. So the major characteristic of urban area is that the built environment is composed of so many built up structures. And then the activities. The major activities in cities is commercial activities because commercial activities is like a core in urban areas. Mainly people do business or industry exists in the city. Let's continue with the topic, what is an urban area? An urban area is a location characterized by high human population density, where people are more in less land and vast human built structures or built features in comparison to the area surrounding it. So city is like a concentrated area of population with concentrated, uh, you can say, buildings. The urban area may be cities, towns, or conurbations. Now, there are different terms to describe an urban area. One is city, other is town, and other is conurbation. But the term is not commonly extended to rural settlements such as villages and hamlets. So, urban does not include the villages and hamlets, but it includes the cities, towns, and conurbations. And the villages and hamlets come as the rural settlement. So there are urban settlements and then there are rural settlements. Villages comprises the large agricultural lands or natural features and hamlets are the settlements with few houses. For example, this is the image of a city or a town. 
and these are like the uh, large cities and this is like a rural area where you find the agricultural land or some natural features such as the river or the uh, mountains or the valleys and there is the agricultural land so you can clearly distinct between the urban area and the rural area urban area having more built up space rural area have more natural spaces urban area have energy requirements a lot for example you can see in this slide uh, on the left lower corner let's go ahead so let's discuss the uh, terms cities towns and conurbations what is a city a city is a large and permanent human settlement a town is a human settlement larger than a village but smaller than a city a conurbation is a region comprising a number of cities large towns and other urban areas that through population growth and physical expansion have merged to form one continuous urban and industrially developed area let's look at this image this is an image of karachi here you can find see that the there is a large permanent settlement settlement and they are uh, you can say various built up structures some are low rise some are medium rise and some are high rise now this is another image of a city or a whole city or whole town and you can see that the urban area is slowly and gradually diminishing and uh, uh, in the surrounding there is a open space here you can find the image of the world where you find the lighting these lighting that you see on the face of the earth showing you the urban areas because urban area have the light and energy and you can see that there is a continuous urban areas uh, that is evident so that is like conurbation which is expanded urban areas or a continuous urban areas conurbation continuous urbanization or conurbation or continuous urban areas so these are the conurbation so now you can easily understand the difference between the cities the towns and conurbation now let's find out how globally urban areas are characterized or what are the major characteristics of an urban area at global scale globally urban areas tend to be home to concentration of power such as government capitals and corporate headquarters and the wealthy and powerful people used to live in the cities so this is a major characteristics of urban areas around the globe further as the cities also organize people and create different kinds of norms beliefs and values each city have different uh, norms beliefs and values and there is a different kind of organization of the people or people are organized in different communities in different various manners there are five things that make a city this is a very uh, you can say globally accepted uh, criteria first the earlier cities if you look at different cities around the world globally the cities around the world have two kinds of spaces one is the old city and other is a new city so if you look at the old cities around the globe all old cities have an old town and the new town and the suburban areas so the old town have a fortification a fort that exists in as in the medieval era there were forts were made and cities were basically have fortification they were surrounded by the city walls so fortification is the global characteristic of urban area from history then there is a market market is another you can say main ingredients of any city the city must have fortification or the administrative areas and there is a market or commercial areas and then there is a law code every city work under the law or a uh, can say code of law or there is a rule of law 
If city have no rule of law, then it is not a city. It is a jungle. Because city have the rule of law. Then there is an association of urban cities with recreating useful corporations. So people join together to make their own governance system. Useful corporation is another important aspect of any city. So it is the association of people and people are self-governing in urban areas. The fifth is sufficient political autonomy for urban citizens to choose the city's governor. It's how the city will be governed, how it will be developed. So these are the five major characteristics that you find in all the cities around the globe. There must be fortification, there is a market, there is a law code, there is an association of urban citizenry and sufficient political economy. Autonomy, sorry. So in some countries, the elite built enclaves outside of central cities. So when you look at different cities, you find that the rich people used to live outside the city and they develop their own cities. Just like we can see here nowadays in Karachi that the, there is a uh, new townships are coming, such as DHA city is outside the city and there is this uh, another scheme, Bahria town for example, that is also, another. so these are the elites enclaves that are also evident all over the world in different cities. So this is like a fort, which whenever there is a fort, it means that there was a city. And there is a fortification or there is a boundary of the city and there is a limit of the city and beyond the city is known as suburban areas or then agricultural land exists. So this is like physically you can see the example of a city. Now, another important thing. Every city has its own urban culture. The person from the New York is quite different from the person from the Karachi. Similarly, a person from Lahore is quite different from the person from Larkana. So there is different kinds of urban culture. What is urban culture? Let's try to understand the urban culture. The urban culture is the culture of towns and cities which remain alive for 24 hours a day and seven days a week. The city never sleeps. It is a saying that all over the world, cities never sleep because people used to uh, work and they are going to enjoy, but they, they everywhere you cannot say that they, all the citizens, when they uh, go up in the, in the morning and sleep in the night, city also have the night activities. City also have a day activities. So there are different kinds of activities that are going on in an urban area, whereas this is quite different from the rural culture, where you have a morning and the noon and the night. So you have different, different kinds of uh, lifestyle. Here your life is 24 hours a day and you can work, people work 24 hour a day. Sometimes they work 36 hours a day. I mean, they continuously work and they do different kinds of activities. So, for example, if you take the example of Karachi, you, are, you find that there are markets which are open in the night also. There are the uh, places, eating places that uh, are on late night. So, there are various activities in the urban area. The urban culture is like a culture of 24 hours working and 7 days a week it is alive. Furthermore, the urban culture encompasses the presence of great number of very different people that coexist in a very limited space. So you can find that there are variety of people. There are people from different communities, different income groups, different levels, different intellectual levels even. So, and there are, you can say good people, there are bad people. And then there is a police. So there are very different kind of people belong to different communities and they are living and coexisting in a very limited space. Most of them remain strangers to each other. In cities, people don't have friends. And uh, there is a, uh, you can say, uh, I can uh, share you uh, the poetry. There is a saying that, Jo gale milo ke tapak se koi haat bhi na milayega, ye naye mizaj ka shahar hai, yaha paasle se mila karo. So people are in the city having different, you can say, intellectual levels, different education levels, different kinds of, uh, you can say, their uh, culture 
and they do not mix together and they have their own group or they have their own society in which they move and move around and but they coexist there are rich people there are poor people they coexist together and there are different worlds and there is a world between us and them for example there is a world of poor people and then there is a world of rich people and then there is a middle class so these are three different different you can say people kind of people that live in one uh, urban space this makes it possible to build up a very vast of array of subculture so there are variety of subculture and close to each other exposed to each other's influence but without intruding in each other's private life so everybody is an individual and individual matters in the city and every individual have its own worth so it is important to understand that in urban culture people do not mix until and unless they have some common benefit or common interest on the basis of these common interests they come together and work for the city and work for themselves after understanding the urban culture let's focus on the rural settlements villages and hamlets here you can see the image of a village it is in the mountainous area here you can see another uh, view of the village and this is like a hamlet here you have few houses together and vast open spaces in our uh, cases of sin for example we have different uh, names given to these settlements for example mud or there is a term known as bhit or there is a term uh, which is like uh, tando so there are different kinds of you can say terminology or urban area terminology or settlement terminology which we need to understand and we can have our own vocabulary of urban uh, town planning here you can see another image of a village or a hamlet what is rural in general the rural area or countryside is a geographical area that is located outside towns and cities the word rural encompassing all the population housing and territory not included within an urban area is rural so whatever is not urban is considered as rural typical rural areas have low population density and small settlements there are very few people and small settlements in the rural area there is another term known as bahradi that is also a term which is used for village or a small community or a hamlet the agricultural areas are commonly rural though so are the others such as forest so when people are living in forest they are also considered as rural areas not urban because in urban area the built up area is more and natural area is less in a rural area built up area is less and natural area is more so different countries have various definition or varying definition of rural for the statistical and administrative purposes so population is one criteria on the basis of which we can distinguish between rural and urban what is meant by rural settlement and village a rural settlement is defined as the place of human habitation from one isolated house to group of houses with certain identification identification of location and name so when there is a place or a human habitation where there are group of people living together in a one isolated house or a group of houses it is like a village or a rural settlement and it must have some location it must be located on the map and it must have a name that is the important thing to define the rural on the other hand as per definition of board of revenue sin a village is defined as the place of human habitation having at least 10 houses the village in population terms could therefore be defined as a place of human habitation having population of about 7 to 100 persons or 7 to 10 household size and above but not more than 5000 so when the population reaches to 
it must become an urban area with certain identified location and name so here you can understand what is urban and what distinguish from rural to urban let's go ahead and further understand this concept now let's look at rural urban differences uh, and the one of the important thing is that the rural society is not in this slide whereas urban society is highly urbanized in this slide so let's look at the rural urban differences the rural society is a pre-industrial society and before industrial revolution whole world was rural and only the capital cities were the cities but the urban society developed when the industrial revolution come so there is a characteristics of pre-industrial rural society and there are characteristics of urban society or industrial society the life in rural society was simple and reflected in the way of living dressing food habits shelter and manners the life in the city is not simple but very complex and complicated people have different kinds of lifestyles in rural area people have same kind of lifestyle in urban area we have different complex and complicated type of lifestyle the rural people had homogeneity and they are like one community they enjoy more or less the same social status and same social life the people in city belong to different castes creeds religions and cultures and do not enjoy the same social status but having various social activities and status in rural society there is very little scope for the occupational mobility people do not move much they have to only go to uh, you can say agriculture lands and come home but here you have different kinds of job and different parts of the city and you have to move around here and there in the city so in cities there are many occupations so occupational mobility is quite frequent in urban areas furthermore in rural areas family played a very significant role and predominant role it's hold a very strong the family values are very strong in rural areas in cities the hold of families is not as strong and many functions which are the families used to perform are taken away by their institution and situation for example the birthdays usually the people uh, you know celebrate their birthday in the uh, you can say restaurants not in the home so this is like quite different but in rural area this is celebrated at home so in villages there is no fast change and as such no necessity for social adaptability in the cities there must be fast mobility and adaptability to suit the changing fast life because every day city is changing and the changing lifestyles one has to change there are new things coming every day and one has to adopt these things in the rural society culture was very deep rooted everyone loved the culture and cultural heritage above everything else so people have the sense of belongingness to their culture but in cities it is different to find pure culture there are various subcultures in the city and people belong to those subcultures in the rural areas the rural communities there is no division of labor and people used to do the same things in urban communities always division of labor and specialization is job is quite evident in natural community or in rural community women folk has less opportunities and status in urban communities women enjoys comparatively high social status rural people love nature and calm peaceful environment and are more especially concerned in cities people have no time to stand and gaze at the nature they are not much spiritual but more of a materialistic nature there are few chances to provide employment and incentive to unemployed by society in rural areas whereas the cities provide both incentive and employment to people and respects ability and judges people's worth finally let's look at a two minute video about the rural urban differences it is a video about city versus countryside as you can see the city is having a hustle bustle of people and vehicles whereas in countryside you find a calm and wilderness and agriculture areas there is high urban density city has modern facilities and these facilities are not available in the rural area whereas in rural area you have a natural environment which offer different kind of modern facilities in urban area there is a crowding and lots of people who are uh, moving around and doing their work 
in rural area you find in nature and natural bounty and there is a calm and peace in urban area we find a public transport or having a large mass transit system for moving of people and there are lots of malls for shopping as commercial areas and the most important thing is the pollution that is evident in the urban area due to smoke whereas in rural area fresh and clean air is quite evitable in urban area you find the city has better education system than rural area and even having lots of people you feel isolated in the city and the life in the countryside is quite slower whereas in urban areas you can find big crime rates and cities are facing this issue you can do different things every day in the city but in rural area the life is same and same thing happens every day in the country finally it is important that we should uh, acknowledge all those people who are behind this lecture because all the done that is done by one person is not actually done by that person but there are people behind it so for this lecture i have gone through all these books and uh, articles and that is uh, given as the references so i recommend you to read from these these are all available online you can read from that uh, and thank you very much thank you for the listening and uh, i i must know that you wanted the lecture notes so for lecture notes you can visit my blog right now that is www.townplanninglectures.blogspot.com you can uh, go on this site you find that there are lectures from one to end all lectures are uploaded earlier and uh, you can uh, read this blog and in, in the blog you can read all the lectures which are available for you to understand thank you very much uh, once again and see you in the next class good luck and goodbye